Hello and welcome to Falkirk Libraries. I'm Tanya and this is Linda who's our sign language interpreter. Now, I have a lovely book for us to read today. It's called The Giant Who Snored and it's written by Mike Nicholson and illustrated by Amy Lewis. This is the tale of a town far away where a curious story unfolded one day. Nearby in the hills lives an unusual friend, a giant on whom one can always depend. He's as tall as ten trees with a head like a house but gentle, kind and quiet as a mouse. It's the happiest time when he visits each day Everyone loves the giant coming to play. The children all think that he's fantastic fun. They climb up on his boots and slide down one by one. On his trampoline tummy bouncing hours without end. While his fingers make seesaws whenever they bend. But one day... The town faced a troubling surprise as the giant was seen slowly closing his eyes. Feeling ever so tired, he was ready for sleep and in less than a minute he was dreaming of sheep. The problem which soon rocked the town to its core began when the giant started to snore. First the roar from his nose, a most deafening sound, rattled and shook all the buildings around. The breath from his mouth, it blew like a gale, so the boats in the harbour broke free and set sail. Then screech went the birds, clang went the bells, and rough went the dogs, barking wildly as well. And soon, every grown-up and all girls and boys covered their ears to escape from the noise. This problem needs fixing, said the mayor with a frown. A reward if you wake him, she announced to the town. This news travelled fast. There's a big job to do. Find someone to stop all this hullabaloo. Make way, cried the blacksmith above all the clamour. I can make lots of noise with my anvil and hammer. He raised it up high and then down with a crash. A metallic ring shattered the air with each bash. But although every strike made a huge smashing sound, the giant dreamed on fast asleep on the ground. My turn, said the tailor, who had five double chins. I've specially sharpened some needles and pins. A jab on the knee and one on the thumb. Then the tailor tried pricking the poor giant's tum. My needles are bent, he said with a splutter. But the giant's response was no more than a mutter. Still the birds screeched, the dogs roughed, and every bell clanged. And all round the town, noises echoed and rang. Next up, the chemist mixed medicines and lotions, a recipe for a new waking up potion. It steamed and it hissed and it bubbled and stank as she wheeled it along in a massive glass tank. As the giant breathed in, the pongy fumes rose. The result was a twitch on his huge heaving nose. He sniffed and he snorted and brushed at his face. Could the chemist have really brought peace to this place? The snoring slowed up and then it died down. At long last some silence fell over the town. The bells all stopped swinging, birds stilled in the park. And the dogs all decided there was no need to bark. But then, 
The giant wafted his hand as if holding a wand, flicking chemist and potion right into the pond. He murmured and grumbled and snorted some more. Then would you believe it, he started to snore again. So clang went the church bells, the birds all went screech, and the dogs barked and ran round and round in the street. The townsfolk were foxed, who in their number could possibly wake their huge friend from his slumber. No one noticed at first amid noises so loud as a girl and a boy peered from the crowd. Their peculiar outfits raised very few hopes. Big raincoats, head torches and the longest of ropes. But all this was their plan to sort out the town's pickle. It's simple, they said. We'll give him a tickle. They heaved themselves up and crawled over his chin. Then shouting, we're ready, they both headed in to the giant's nose. Ugh. The girl and the boy both held feather dusters and with three, two, one, go, waved with all they could muster. Their fast moving arms whizzed round in a blur and before long, the giant had started to stir until... Ah, 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 choo! As fast as a rocket going off at full throttle, out popped the children like corks from a bottle. All went quiet. Birds, bells and dogs. The giant no longer slept like a log. He snuffled and yawned and then opened his eyes. There were cheers, hugs and tears at this welcome surprise. What's wrong? said the giant, who sat up and then paused as the mayor broke the news of the trouble he'd caused. The poor gentle giant got rather a shock when he heard that his snoring had made buildings rock. He promised to never more nap in the day and if he felt drowsy, go home straight away. So whenever the hills echoed thunderclaps deep, everyone knew that the giant was asleep. And in case the great snorer should ever return, the mayor had a plan from what they had learned. A glass box was the answer to stop future fluster. Inside it were ropes, coats and two feather dusters. Look, there's the mayor giving the boy and girl a medal. And that's the end of that story. Now, we've got a silly rhyme here about two little birds. Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall. One named Peter, one named Paul. Fly away, Peter. Fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter. Come back, Paul. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it today. And we'll see you another time. Thanks for watching. Bye.